Good evening everybody, thank you very much for joining in. This side Rahul Magan here on behalf of Tragedy Consulting LLP as a Chief Executive Officer. And today we are going to cover a very very important topic which is tragic, uh, which is Enterprise Risk Management ISO 31000 Guidelines. As you very well understand that risk is getting very, uh, markets are getting very very volatile. You know that currencies are getting very very volatile. There are a lot of frauds which are happening across the globe. Every second day a fraud is coming up. Like our YouTube channel covered a fraud on uh, Neuromama. We have a fraud of Rico India. And there are multiple companies across the globe which are doing variety variety of frauds. So in that regards these ISO standards are very very important nowadays. And today we are going to discuss about ISO 31000 guidelines for a corporate. In this presentation, you can consider uh, uh, any corporate, basically uh, service-oriented corporate or uh, I would say a merchandise-based corporate. But before starting this video, I would like to share the fact that these standards are just a guidelines. Please be note that market is evolving at a very fast pace. Like take a very simple example. Few years ago, nobody ever thought about that we could have a world wherein the interest rate would be negative. Nobody could thought that before 2008 that there would be time when central banks would be excessively dependent upon the quantity easing. Nobody could be thought in India that State Bank of India along with the five other sister concerns would merge and this would create a largest entity which would uh, be in the top 50 banks of the globe. Time will tell how this will move. So things are changing very fast. Markets are getting very, very, very volatile. Henceforth, these ISO, ISO standards play a very, very important regard. But somehow or not, there is a there is a tendency in the market that these ISO standards stand alone will save you from all kind of risk. No, this is not the case. These ISO standards will save you not not from the these ISO standards will save you if you have a, other frameworks also. So just simple, you have ISO standards. I shortly refer ST. You would have a COSO. You would have a SOX. Say for IT, you would have a NIST. Uh, COBIT. And here are SSA 16. So risk management, these are the standards of the risk management. They give you guideline, they, they will create, create a uh, kind of framework. But again, you have to use the variety of frameworks also to consider that. Yes, I would surely appreciate the fact that today we are not living in the time when certainly you can be fully dependent upon the one thing. So I would like to read few things from the paper which I have, which is published in Australia. That risk management is an increasingly important business driver and stakeholders have become more and more concerned about risk. Risk may be a driver of the strategic decision. It may be cause of uncertainty in the organization or it may be simply an embedded in the activities of the organization. An entry-wide approach to risk management enables an organization to consider the potential impact of all type of risk. Now what do you mean by risk? In my view, the risk, before risk, everything comes an exposure. Now, what is an exposure? Exposure varies from company to company. So, take an example of Infosys. Infosys is very much concerned in case of any violation in the IPR because they are dealing with so many international clients having a reputational impact. If any of the, any of the, any of the uh, employees of the Infosys would leak out any of the information, it would have a biggest impact. Take an example of uh, Lafranche which is a cement company, they would be concerned about the quality because the cement which they are making is going to be used in making buildings, dams, a big infrastructure and if they, if they compromise with the quality, they would go on. So everybody would have a different kind of exposure. Yes, certainly you can say that we have a word called thematic exposure that if you talk about a cement industry, the thematic exposure more of the quality and all. Certainly we can talk about that if you are talking about the IT industry, there, there would be more focus on the IPR protection, the protection of the data, the, there should not be infringement of the data pertaining to client and so on and so forth. In that regards, ISO 31000 play a very very important role. I have since in the interest of the space, I have divided this into three parts, which is you can very well see part A, part B and part C. Part A talk, talk about risk architecture, risk strategy and risk management process and risk protocols. In my view, this protocol means he is talking about that framework, which is your COSO, SOX, NIST, COBIT, and SSA 16. But at the same time, we clearly need to understand. But at the same time, we clearly need to understand that this is not a cup of tea for everybody. 
because everybody cannot have that and unless you are having the global frameworks uh, in your company there is no point now let me read a small paragraph about iso iso uh, 30001 iso 30001 sometimes sync with coso erm as well however the guidelines of iso 30, 30001 provides the following example what it provides it provides that it provides the scope of the risk nature of the risk stakeholders risk evaluation loss experience risk tolerance risk response potential for risk improvement and strategy and policy development this is all nine or ten categories where iso 31 iso 31001 is moving let me repeat the scope of the risk scope of the risk uh, talks about the details of the possible events including the description of the event their size and type and nature and number nature of the risk the classification of the risk time scale of the potential impact and the description as a hazard opportunity and uncertainty you have stakeholders which talks about both internal and external you have the risk evaluation which is likelihood and magnitude of the event and possible impact like you have a variety of that which is expected loss default probability of default and variety of this then you have loss experience risk tolerance risk response potential strategy policy and development here I will hold and I will say this would be response for developing strategy related to the risk responsibility for auditing compliance and control now in this you have architecture A which is risk architecture, risk strategy, risk management process and risk protocols then very important we will go to big B B means mandate and commitment design framework, organization and its contest, risk management policy, embedding and everything like that now who there are three important committees sorry my mistake two important committees which takes care of that in every company one is audit committee and one is disclosure committee now disclosure committee talks about what we certainly need to disclose in a company how we are going to disclose to a company what are the variety of ways we are going to disclose example you have 10 sets of data what you should disclose what you should not disclose and all that is disclosure committee what is the way we are going to make the financials and so on and so forth on the other hand audit committee is the main committee the difference between the audit committee and the disclosure is the statutory auditors however nowhere it has mentioned that exactly how much time and what would be the strength of the statutory auditor to sit like statutory auditor refers to you could have the partner you could have the senior partner you have, may, might have the manager you might have the am so nowhere it has mentioned then you have part c you first need to establish the context then you need the risk assessment then you need the risk identification risk analysis risk evaluation and risk treatment so if you collectively add three which is a predominantly which is known as risk architecture B which is the organization response which generally is divided into two parts which is audit committee and disclosure committee in disclosure the difference between the audit committee and the disclosure committee is the statutory auditor and of course not to repeat again that statutory auditor are the people who consolidate your books who will put their stamp like you are sometimes referred to as a big five like EY, KPMG, PWC, Deloitte and sometimes GT then you have that Essentially, ISO 30001 is growing, ISO standards are growing, ISO 21000, ISO you know, 22000 and ISO 30001. Before winding up this video, let me take you to very very important context about ISO 30001. ISO 30001 describes a framework for implementing risk management rather than a framework for supporting the risk management process. Information on designing the framework that supports the risk management process is, is set out in detail in ISO 30001. 30, An organization describes its framework for supporting risk management by the way of risk architecture strategy and the protocols for the organization, which we are saying risk architecture and protocols. Here we mentioned two, which is audit committee as well as disclosure committee. Now, the risk architecture strategy and protocol represent the internal arrangement for the communication on the risk issues. It also sets out the roles and responsibility of the individuals and the committees that supports the risk management process which is audit committee and disclosure committee. 
the risk strategy should set out the objective that risk management activities in the organization are seeking to achieve finally the risk protocol describe the procedures by which the strategy will be implemented and risk is is managed so in nutshell the purpose of this 10 minutes video is to deliberate in the fact that these iso standards are getting very very important unfortunately there are many companies still in india and across the world who still think that these standards are not uh, not very relevant but at the same time tajik consulting llp would uh, like to assure one fact that perfect you should have this iso 31000 but you should take care of the global frameworks also which is coso sox nist cobit and ssa 16 that should matter that is what the purpose to tell you about that iso 30001 in case you need any consulting on iso 30001 you can welcome to contact tajik consulting llp at the gmail.com or alternate email id is rahulmagan8 at the rate gmail.com our mobile number is 9889242978 and our skype connect is rahul5327 before winding up this video we would like to stress the fact that these iso standards are getting very very relevant considering the fact that market is getting highly volatile at the same time we would like to stress two important factor that one is the architecture process and one is the this organizational these tools are very relevant when it comes to risk management thank you and this is tragic consulting